You know what it is? It's your boy Hakeem Green. Channel Live Live and Direct. BDP all day, every day. You know we spark Madism. Rocking out on Madism Sports with my co-host, Wes Henderson. Are you, you know what I mean? Represent, represent. Are you, <laughs> I see you, son. I see you. Joe, uh, Jersey, go Jersey. Yo, it's been 30 years. I might as well. That's the last time it was in the tournament when I was in school. So wow. even though they lost, they gave me a win at least. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I got one. You got one? There it is. Hey, man, big up to Rutgers University. You know, it's been a long time. But, you know, like I said, to, to, to taste the tournament after 30 years, you say? 30. It's the last time it was there. 30 years wow, ago. Wow, 30 years ago. That's 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 dope. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Well, listen. Played, uh, they played Arizona State that had, uh, remember Isaac Austin played for the Miami Heat? Yeah, okay. That, that was the, they, they lost to that team by like, I think one point. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. man. You got memories. You yeah. got memories. A lot of bad ones, but this year they gave you a good one. So it's all good. I see you with the red, with yeah. the R. That's solid. That's solid. So, yeah. uh, listen, we have a, a, a you know, a phenomenal show set up today, you know, Absolutely. It's, it's, it's women's her story month, mm -hmm. you know, women's month. And, um, you know, we, we, we needed to get that feeling, that flavor, that perspective, you know, involved in the show. So we have a, a wonderful guest lined up. That's like, just took the show probably to the whole next level. Uh, big shout out to main event, you know, for, for, for setting it up. Uh, we have, you know, Former WNBA two-time world champion Tamika Dixon from the LA Sparks. She's gonna be in the building today. It's about to get righteous. It's about to be right and exact. You know what I mean? So yeah, we definitely love that she decided to join us this week and, and, and close out Women History Month on the right uh note. So you know how we do. We set up, we play videos, start the show. I got a little added flavor because tomorrow, you know, we have the uh the live stream performance, the Madism Cipher. It's going, going to be on the Madison TV platform, YouTube and Facebook tomorrow night at nine o'clock. So I'm a little teaser there. An, uh, another little spot from New, the New Jersey weed man. We know weed is legal in Jersey. So, you know, he he, he supported us. So we gonna show him a little love. And of course, we got, you know, th the usual flavors. And during that time, we're going to invite people to the building, share the links, subscribe, like, you know, bring people to the to, to the Madison sports family. So we can uh, build this this platform out. All right, y'all. Here we go. It's your boy Hakeem Green, channel live, live and direct, BDP, all day, every day. You know we spark Madism, let y'all know about the Madism Cypher, going down on the Madism TV platform, big shout out to the New Jersey Weed Man, big shout out to Cool 420 Parties, you know how we do, yeah, performing live and direct, we got Grand Design, we got Born Legacy, we got Dynast, we got Serum, we got Weed M Zones, and of course your boy Hakeem Green is going to be setting it off live and direct with a little something, 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 of course DJ XS, two L's up, XS Keys, look out for DJ XS and my man Key to Life. They're gonna be doing a set as well. Two L's up, like I said. Big shout out to DJ Heron on the one and twos. He's gonna be doing a little set, keeping the party going. Big shout out to Bart at the Moose Complex. All we do is spark mad ism. Mad ism ciphers going down, y'all. Yeah!
masks, social distancing, and other mitigation measures they've put in place. The president's been itching to begin easing the nationwide guidelines meant to stem the outbreak and contain the economic fallout. While the weekly jobless numbers are out and they are a staggering show of the early impact of the new coronavirus on the economy, around 3.3 million people filed for unemployment in the past week, far exceeding the previous record from 1982. This goes out. All my smoke. My dad believe that I'll choose my this life for the right to be free. Set up that I believe I'll treat you like it's for the Madism in effect, hip hop changed the game. Everybody smoke good, my grower changed the strain. I used to smoke for the thrill, now I do it for the pain. I stay pushed weight, I do it for the gains. It's like a revolution, prince with purple rain. Purple Kush, purple haze, like cheese in a maze. So I put lights in a tunnel, LEDs apply the rays. All we do is spark medicine, that shit is all the craze. Remember back in the days, trade bags of haze from the corner bodega, poppy put it in some lace. It was rhymes and a cipher with blunts in the air, then off with a short. Shorty couch locked in a chair My shorty look exotic weed Kinda rare She said the weed was erotic With smoke in the hair Is it makes the time go by Life without a care So roll it up, light it up Put it in the air I believe in happy faces Yes, this is true Love is just for special people Yes, just like you If you're reaching for the stars You know you can do Johnny plays. I get pounds from Sugar Hill, I get dimes from Sugar Rays I keep the aromatic, it's a passion, not a habit I keep go with green, it's like carrots go with rabbits It's so automatic how the weed gets lit Duplicate the seed, clones get clipped Hawk what you puffin' on, I know that ain't the piff Wedding cake and gelato, huh? Wanna lit? I got flavors, pump flavors, they call me Flavor Flav Gorilla Glue number four, and super, super haze Afghani and the cough, sour diesel gets me off I'm looking for a rental property, something like a law So I can grow these trees, just in time for Christmas Ain't Nick with the gift list, I know you wanna hit this Look for madism, when it's time to light a flare Then roll it up, light it up, put it in the air I believe in happy faces, yes this is true Love is just for special people, yes, just like you. If you're reaching for the stars, you know you can do anything you want to if you just get into the group. I'll believe that I will use my right for the right to be me. I believe that I'll choose this fight for the right to be me. says they hope to start rolling them out in three weeks. The payments are based on your latest tax filing. Individuals who earn $75,000 or less will get $1,200. Yes, yeah, sir. That was, I believe, put it in the air by your boy Hakeem Green featuring Carl Thomas. Um, yeah, that's what that was. And, and we here live and direct. Big shout out to MBK Crypto. Um, let me bring my other co-hosts in the building, the legendary KG from Naughty by Nature, DJ yeah. KG from Naughty by Nature's in the yeah. building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Rocking that Ruckus hat today, huh? Yeah, man. I had to, I had to go find it. <laughs> <laughs> they put up a fight, man. They, put yeah, up they, a fight. They, they gave it away, though, but it's all good. They gave yeah. that away. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yo, uh, K, MBK Crypto, that's our family. Howie from from EO, he he sends the piece. He says, "What's up?" You okay. know, All yes, right. sir. Yeah, yeah. 
And we got a, you know, we got an incredible show lined up. You know, we got Tamika Dixon. She's in the building. She she's waiting to be brought in. So, uh, you know, I want to, you know, just address last week's wrap up. I know we had the brackets that happened, so we had some activity there. Let's just close that out before we bring her in, so we can just really spend some time with her. All right. So, gentlemen, where do we where do we end up? I'm, I know, I know, I know. West Houston, I know West Houston still in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know what? I, I fronted, I fronted and sent in Wes. I sent in my text to to Hot, telling them, what, and I fronted on my Michigan boys, and they still alive, man. Oh, yeah. I, 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 when I saw your pics, I was like, he don't have Michigan in there. I know, I fronted last minute. I just, I just, I, I switched it off to um to um Alabama and just messed up. Yo. Well, yeah, because yeah, they, they, they. I mean, they playing real good without livers. Yeah. Um, I think they um they kind of I guess it's easier to prepare when um you know he's not gonna be there versus him getting right. hurt during the NCAA game. Right. So they they had time to you know get their minds right. Um. So yeah, they look they look good though. But yeah, I was I was like on Sunday, people was like, <laughs> oh you you got RU but but you pick Houston. I was like I don't care right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if Houston lose. I'm still gonna be happy. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I shouldn't have did it, man. You know, I just I fronted on my boys. I fronted. Wow. Now nah, it's, it's been a good tournament, though. Um, let me tell you though, what I did notice: those two kids on um Oral Roberts, those are two pros. Those yeah, are two Obana, pros. Obana, and um, what's his name? Ace Smith. Ace Smith and Obana. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Like, I call Obana. I would call him uh, Al Horford 2.0 because yeah. they looking think like he plays a lot like Horford. Um, under control, big man game, box you on the, get you on the block, get you from the top of the key with the three. He was killing, you know. So yeah, Ace is just a gunner, yo. Know? He just be going, yo. Yeah, they tough. tough. They tough. I like, yeah. I like, I like squads like that that come from left field, man, and just be yep. putting it up and doing it. Yep. And it's the yep. time, like you said, it's the grand stage, man. And they definitely, you know, doing their part right now, man. So and you know what's crazy is the culture too, because I was watching, um, uh. Oklahoma was it not um was it uh Gonzaga was playing uh Oklahoma and the guard Reeves on Oklahoma was giving it to uh Suggs. I mean he was giving it to Suggs like he stole something. Suggs had like 13, but he got the W. Um a man had 30, but the way Suggs was like looking at him like like this kid, he ain't nothing, ain't but he was killing you, Suggs. <laughs> like that's the attitude people have now, they like whatever. They don't want to, they don't like when people kind of push up. And this kid in Oklahoma was like, I heard you the best player coming out. So I'm coming to get you. And he didn't accept the challenge. He kind of just said, well, whatever. Even though he got the win, and I get it, his bigger picture is the win, right? But I would like to see him not have that attitude in the game, like, like you know, whatever. You know? Yeah, man, because you got to think about it like this. A lot of these are uh, mid majors, or even, I'm not saying Oklahoma, obviously, Oklahoma's not a mid major, but yeah. I'm saying a lot of these mid majors, when they do go against these big teams, and that's what these, you know, players come in with that mentality, basically like no other time I might be able to play you. And now we're on that big, this big stage and, and I don't care what school you at or how many times they show you on TV, dude, I'm about to give you these that's, bucks. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. <laughs> and I'm going to show the world that you ain't ready for me. I don't care. Yeah. All right. They might not. They might have slept on me and I might be at a small school, but watch this. That's it. That's 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 what you love. But that's what you gotta love about the tournament, man. That's what you gotta love about it. So it's, to, it's been good, man. It's been real good. Yeah. 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 Some, okay, really so, good, some really good games, man. Some some. Okay. I, I'm not not necessarily gonna say shocker shockers like where you like wow wow like that mm -hmm. like I can't believe that but like some really really good games, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Loyola Illinois beating Illinois. That's 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 personal. Like if Illinois didn't know that was personal, <laughs> we from the same hood. Like I don't care if y'all went to Illinois. We in Loyola Illinois. We got you. Like, yeah. I everybody on your team. That's that was like a that's a that's a personal game right there. Illinois not being ready for that punch. That's a problem. Yeah, and and that, and most likely that whole roster was probably turned down from Illinois. Exactly. <laughs> that makes it really personal and so dope. Yep. Yep. Okay, crazy. So you know what else has happened over the last week that's 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 noteworthy before we before we move to our guests. Um, Wes's boy. Wes's boy. Number one. Who's he's that? Down. Your boy's down. Oh, LeBron. Yes, he's down. Oh, yeah, he is down. Um, 
Well, yeah. that's, actually, that's actually my boy. West, yeah, West, it's, it's, West, it's, West it's, is a Laker fan. He's not a LeBron fan. I know, fan. but I'm stopping <laughs> playing with his boy. I'm just messing with him. I know. Uh, he's, I know. It, I know. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yo, he's down. Like, I, 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 ooh, it's looking bad for the Lakers. It, it looks really bad for the Lakers right now. But they could be, they could actually be a ninth seed by next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, it's, I, I, it ain't actually, I think they are going to be. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they they're gonna be fighting, scratching and clawing once you know AD comes back or LeBron. But once it gets, honestly, it's gonna get the cold red, and they're gonna be about to push that button, and LeBron's gonna be like, "Hey, suit me up." But you know what yeah. the crazy part is? If you Utah and you Phoenix, you like, damn, because you you don't want that as the eighth seed in the or the seventh seed as no, your you first round matchup. You don't want that. Because it's not a it's not a legitimate eight nah, or seventeen. It's team. not a, so exactly getting yeah. a, a number one seed. Really, you know, by what happened now, yeah. you're going at them. It's basically yeah. it flips around. It's basically like it's almost as if you're really the eight seed. Yeah, and you know, uh, Kyle Kuzma, man, what's going on with him, man? You know, we talked early in the year about yeah. this being a pivotal a pivotal moment for him. You know, and hit expectations, him meeting expectations. Right now, it's you know, it's he's looking for him to step up and not so much. Yeah, it's up and down. He's too he's inconsistent. So one day he'll get you twenty three, then the next day he gets you ten. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I can say that he is doing, he's been pretty consistent on the rebounding side, and he's been consistent in up in his assist numbers. But they need him to score mm-hmm. um, more so than anything because he's got the ability to get his own shot, and there's not a lot of people on the Lakers that can get their own shot. Mm-hmm. So you between him and Schrader. Those are probably the two guys that can really get it off the bounce. And um, after that, you know, they really don't. I mean, this kid, uh, T- uh, Horton Tucker, mm-hmm. I mean, I, that was a preseason wonder. But, you know, yeah, he, moved, he moving at like 35 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone, you know. So, yeah, you know, he's so <laughs> slow out there, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, mean, look, I, I, I mean, root for Kuzma, too, man. Yeah, I, too. Just, I just don't know, man. Like, tag, like. Cause I thought, you know, them keeping Kuzma was a good, you know, a good choice at, at one time. And I was just like, okay, but I see why, you know, people wanted Ingram. I, I mean, I knew Ingram was good, but I see, yeah. I thought that Kuzma was just as good as him at least what, you know, especially given a chance, you yeah. know, Ingram went to a team, they threw him in the fire. So, you know, when you get thrown in the fire, you gotta, you know, put it up. Mm-hmm. So I felt like Ingram just had the opportunities to showcase and now with Kuzma having his opportunity to showcase, it's just not, you know, it's not panning out, at least not right now. Nah, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's not, it's not, it's not panning out the way we all think it could. Um, you know, he's just, yeah, he's like I said, he's just got to be more consistent on the um, scoring tip. That, that's pretty much it. And yeah, they, I can tell you too, that. man, like who's been like disappointing so far, man. Wesley Matthews, man, like. Oh, very much oh, so. Yeah. Like, I don't know, yeah. know what happened to that guy. Whoa, I'm like, tag, like, what, like, what is he even out there for, man? Yeah, Wes Matthews has really been a bad, uh, a bad fit, right, this year. Um, because he's capable of so much more, you know. You, 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 you know, you look at Wesley Matthews, you're thinking a guy that's gonna be able to come off the bench, get you, you know, get about eight shots up, make about four or five of them, you know, especially from three. He's been in the doghouse, he's been under the bench a few games, you know, he's got to play now, though. Yeah, so, now. yeah, yeah. It's crazy, crazy. Well, look, well, look. Let, let's pick up that rest of that conversation later because yeah. you know we, we got a very special guest waiting in the wings, and you know we definitely don't want to keep her too long. You know, so let's bring in you know Miss Tamika Dixon, two-time WNBA champion from the LA Sparks, also from New Jersey. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Yeah, no, we appreciate you. Uh, you know, first of all, you know, we're doing a sports show, so you know, you, you're official. So yes. we, we've just stepped up and become official today. You know, <laughs> that that and it's women's her story month. So, you know, it's only right that we bring in some, you know, a woman to come in. And, and talk about the importance of celebrating women, especially with the WNBA being the fantastic league that it is. You know, it's thank you for be, being a part of our show. I appreciate it. Thank you for the invite. This is awesome. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Right. So, you know, I'm going to start it like how I usually start it, talking to ball players. You know, I, I like to know, 
you know, the, the cultural aspect of the game, you know, so, you know, how'd you get into playing basketball? What inspired you? Who inspired you? So my story is, uh, it's pretty cool. I, uh, my father actually played when I was growing up. Um, he was a very good player. Um, and you know, most girls grow up wanting to be like their moms and, and aunts and grandmothers, but I, I just looked at my dad and he was like, my guy. So I wanted to grow up being like him. And um, he never really forced me to play the game, but just uh, being around him. Um, I can remember as early as the age of three years old, you know, him putting the ball in my hand. Mm -hmm. um, and my parents had me young, so they were uh, 17 when they had me. So he uh, got a full scholarship to attend American University. Um, and when he would come home during the summers um, and, and work out, he would just bring me to the gym with him. So it kind of rubbed off that way. Um, pretty unique story. Um, he was a uh, like in his senior year um, in college, he was a projected lottery pick. He was um, supposed to go uh, top 10 in the NBA and 10 games into his senior season, he tore his ACL. So back, you know, back then, uh, Science wasn't technology hadn't caught up yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, late seventies, early eighties, you know, mm. science and technology just wasn't what it was. Um, mm. so, you know, that forced him, you know, to, I mean, he still got drafted, you know, second round by the Cavaliers and mm. had a pretty good overseas, um, international, uh, you know, uh, career, but, um, you know, we all always think about what could have been had he not gotten hurt. Um, he was, mm -hmm. He was thorough. He was he was calm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As he put the ball in my hand and um, uh, you know, got me started. Wow, that's dope. Yeah. Uh Jersey. I know Wes is a rucker, a ruckus cat. KG, of course, is legendary yes. ruddy by nature from Jersey. Yes. You know, Absolutely. yeah. And, that, and that's that's one thing, but you know, you, you got a chance to see the country, the world, you know, you attended Kansas. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you wreck shop at Kansas, mm -hmm. you know, um, you played in the WNBA, mm -hmm. you know, um, we, you hear a lot of stories from women who play in the WNBA and also play in the international game, too. Mm -hmm. ha have you touched the international stage at all or? Yeah. So what I would do to stay in shape, you know, during my WNBA years is I would play overseas in the off season. So, mm -hmm. you know, typically. You know, we were playing like an 80 game season because we would go, you know, we'd play in the WNBA 35, 40 games and then go overseas and play another 35, 40. So we were playing an 82 game season like the NBA. Um, so, yeah, I, um, I was, you know, fortunate to be able to play internationally. Um, those years were probably some of my best years. I played six years in Italy, um, a year in Russia, and a year in Turkey in between my WNBA seasons. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And what's the difference in the in the style of the game, the culture of basketball overseas as opposed to the United States? Um, I think it was probably a little bit more. I want to say they got away with more, so it was a lot more physical. Mm. Um, mm. you know, over there, um, mm. you took eating, and then mm. you know, as an American going over there, you know, they they really wanted to <laughs> wanted to hammer you, so. It was um it was rough. The physicality of the game was was uh, it was much more aggressive there. But um, um, you know, I love both. I love both. I love the WNBA, mm -hmm. and then I love the international play as well. I thought, you know, both complemented each other, and it mm -hmm. made me a better player um, when mm -hmm. I came back to the WNBA. Wow. Now I've also heard that you know the money's better overseas. Is that true? Depends on who you are. <laughs> it depends yeah. on who you are. Um, mm -hmm. I was fortunate, you know, to mm -hmm. to um, you know be a six figure earner over there mm -hmm. and over here as well. So for mm -hmm. me, I was thankful for that. But you know, it depends on who you are. If you if you're a top player or one of the top players, you can go over there and command a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, that the WNBA just isn't paying at the not. You know, the salaries have increased since, you know, when I was playing. Mm -hmm. um, but even still, you know, you got, you know, some players over there that could command a million dollars. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fellas, let me. Uh... Yeah, I have. I mean, uh, the, the, the question I listen, when I when I was uh, 
remembering about the Sparks. I know you were part, like you were one of like four people of being in the league from like the inaugural season on until the first 13 years. So that's like big time to me. So how did that feel to be like a pioneer of the league? It was dope. You really don't think about it like, you know, while you're in it. Mm -hmm. um, but just, you know, after retirement and having an opportunity to reflect on it, it was like, wow. You know, because you look at uh, you look at some of the players that you played with and alongside of and You know, careers really don't last long at the professional level. So mm -hmm. to be able to do that, you know, um, consistently for 13 years um, was was a definitely an honor. And um, something I'm really proud of. Um, you should, I, you should be. I mean, three time, uh, three time all star. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And to win, and to win, and to win the champ, and win championships too, as well. So that's a great thing as well. Mm. Oh, absolutely. The, to the ultimate goal. You can't beat that. You know. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. <laughs> and then you played in the city where you know the best one two punch of all time played. You know, Shaq and Kobe. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, you know, those years are special um, yeah. because uh, when we were winning our championships, they were as well. Mm -hmm. We went back mm. home the same years that they went back to back. Um, mm -hmm. So we, you know, the city was on fire during <laughs> during that era. It was crazy, mm -hmm. and they were very supportive of us. Um, uh, Kobe and Shaq used to, uh, you know, Derek, all of those guys used to be at the games and supporting mm -hmm. us. So it was really like a like a brother sister type of relationship mm -hmm. between us. So it was really special. Yeah. Hey, okay, you got something? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> because I got, I got one more question. Okay, on. good. And is and I know I know you're gonna be able to help me on and answer this because um they gave Dawn Staley the mm -hmm. money. And she almost tore into the NCAA. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. How do you feel about how the women are being treated versus the men in the NCAA tournament? Uh, I, it's it's frustrating. You know, it's 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 always been an uphill battle. Mm -hmm. Thinking, you know, and, and right now that you know, this is this has been the year of the woman, and you know, all of these advances that we've been able to uh, accomplish thus far, and to see that um, was disheartening. Um, but I am so happy that everybody, you know, that these the coaches, players that are that are involved in it are using their platform um, mm -hmm. to make a difference. Um, Dawn speaking out, you've got several coaches, Mel Fortner, and mm -hmm. a lot of players have stepped out. A lot of WNBA players have stepped forward and said things about it. So it's it's bringing attention. NBA um, players as well. Yeah, NBA players too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. NBA players. So it's it's the time now, you know, to to you know, to make that known and, and have a voice and uh, voice it. And hopefully, you know, with all of the attention that is received, we will we will start to see that this this won't be an issue. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, I'm hopeful for that. No, to build off that point about the W, I mean, excuse me, the NBA players being supportive. Mm -hmm. When you mentioned Kobe's name, yeah. that's, that's kind of what the, you know, his, you know, really uh, investment into women's basketball it's yeah. something that was was huge. Can can you talk about his impact and just other other players, be they NBA players or WNBA players, who are really invested into the women's game? Yeah. So Cole, um, Cole, we had a we had a really cool relationship because Cole came into the to the uh, to the NBA the same year that I came into the WNBA. So we, mm. were, you know, we were you know neck and neck. I mean, even though he came straight out of high school and I was in college. Yeah. You know, our our uh, situations was kind of the same. You know, we were kind of rookies trying to figure things out. Um, and he was always around us. So I think, you know, just him, you know, being involved early on, mm -hmm. um, having all daughters, obviously, you know, that yeah. <laughs> that creates a situation where you want, you know, the best for your daughters. That's right. Um, Gigi was coming along, and I thought that she probably would have been a uh, transformational player for you know, for women's basketball, um, had she had an opportunity to continue along that path. And I think Kobe understood that and understood, you know, he had a vision for where women's basketball should be. Um, so you had, and then he had, you know, the cachet and, the, and, the, and, and everything behind that. So he could have really put the platform a little more. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to, to not see that come to fruition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think even you know, even with what he's did, what he has done um, mm -hmm. prior to his, you know, to him passing, 
Um, I think that put a lot of eyes on the game and, and, and you know, a lot of people started to take, take note and pay attention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got um, I got a quick question. Are you still involved with, with the game? Yeah. Um, you know, I still do stuff for the WNBA um, from time okay. to time. Um, you know, I, I get the question all the time, you know, do you want to coach? Why aren't you coaching? Right. Right. <laughs> I've never really had a passion to coach. Um, I do have a passion for like one-on-one training. So I did a little bit of that. Okay. Um, I like to see growth and, you know, people develop their games and things like that. Um, so I did do that. And, you know, I, I've all, I've always lent a hand in camps and clinics, you know, local camps and clinics and things like that. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm still around it. I can't, Definitely can't be too far away. When I first mm-hmm. retired, I was kind of burnt out from it. So I took some time and, you know, couldn't watch because I always felt like I could still play. You know, I had to step away from it. Mm-hmm. But four or five years in, uh, it, after retirement, I'm like, okay, so now I can't turn the TV off with the, you know, March Madness and right. WBA, mm-hmm. NBA games. I'm, you know, I'm constantly watching. Got tired of walking by by the ball and just kicking it. Just yeah. kicking it out your, kick it out your way. Finally, you just say, right. you know, man, let me pick this ball up. <laughs> you know, listen, Father Tom is undefeated. You know, yeah, this ball. I, I understand yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I, I went through it. You just, you just gotta, you know, it comes to a point where you just gotta play with, you know, people your age. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know. Just get some old, you know, some over forty leagues. And all yeah. That. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, I want to throw a curveball at you. Sure. So it's often said, right, that the women's game is a more fundamentally sound game, mm-hmm. right? The men's game is more athletic, it's more exciting, but the women's game is more fundamentally sound. Mm-hmm. So when you're watching the NBA game, are you frustrated at all as a person whose knowledge of how the game is supposed to be played? You see all this, you know, tomfoolery going down, and you're like, what's going on with the game? <laughs> you know what? What? It's funny because I'm I'm always coaching. I'm a couch coach. I'm always coaching from the couch. Um, but I, yeah, but what I see in today's game is it's just a lack of a mid-range game. Like it's either a layup dunk or a three-pointer. Like nobody got that, you know, that mid-range game. If you had that in today's game, you mm-hmm. kill it. But it's either or in today's game, and it you know it's it's crazy. Crazy to see, but you know that's the evolution of the game. That's where this game is going. Is it the evolution or is it the devolution? Is it is it, de- is it destroying the game or is it? You, you can know? argue that it's the devolution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but you know, I really, you know, that's why I made my money. That's why I ate mid range game was my game. So mm-hmm. I, I appreciated that, and I think you know if more players will implement that into their game today, mm-hmm. um, it's lethal because ain't nobody else doing it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, I mean, it's on the male side, I mean, one person that definitely that that does it a lot is Kawhi, and mm-hmm. it's just like, oh yeah, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. Like he gets to that spot, the same spot, almost all the time. And once he yeah. gets the yeah. money, you count that. <laughs> now you could, you're right. You know, yeah. you just got everybody out there just jacking up threes. Really, you know, they're giving up layups. Like guys are going to the basket and got a layup and kicking it out for a three. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's why I turned off the. I couldn't even watch the like the All Star game. It was just like, it was just like it was crazy to me. Yeah. You know, until, until it gets to a point where you know now they want to win, then they start to play. But before that, it's like you know, it's just it's free fall pickup. You know, let's dump yeah. throwing oops and and three pointers. That's yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So who who was your toughest competition? Um, or, or, or did you have competition? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my and during my years, I was always uh, the person to guard the hardest person or the you know mm-hmm. the most often it's a potent person. So sent so Coop, I had plenty of battles with her. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, Coop, Cheryl Swoops. Um, you know, the, the, the normal people that everybody kind of hears. But I think the one person that a lot of people don't talk about that I really had a lot of respect for her game is Andrea Stinson. Um, played for, you know, Charlotte Sting. Um, yeah. She was tough. She had, she, had every, she had every trick in the book, and she taught me a lot. Um, so she was one 
that was definitely hard to guard um, and, and somebody I always gave kudos to. Wow. Yeah. So, so what's going on with, with you today? Like, you know, we, you're not, you're a couch coach. Yeah. But yes. where, 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 where has life taken you in 2021? <laughs> I mean, aside from, you know, the pandemic and what we've gone through over the last year, you know, sh share some good news with folks about what you got going on right now. Sure. So I've been an entrepreneur for the last 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. I own a Avis and Budget uh, car rental franchise. Mm -hmm. I actually just sold the franchise in January. Um, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after 10 years in business, um, I, you know, you see with COVID kind of uh, made me see a lot of things. Um, but one of the things that it opened my eyes to is where we're going, you know, mm -hmm. Um, and how this has changed my industry, uh, which is the rental car industry. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, you know, it was a good opportunity to get out, you know, get out with a shirt on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> still. Um, so I sold in January. Um, I'm kind of really starting to uh, figure out what I want to do next. Um, as an athlete, I'm always in competition with myself. So I'm always trying mm -hmm. to figure out that next thing to mm -hmm. compete with. Um, real estate probably is going to be the move for me. Um, mm -hmm. I get to dip my toe in the real estate game. And I also do some day trading. So now I'm, I'm kind of like engulfed in mm -hmm. that. Right now. So those are the mm -hmm. two things. I see yeah. all the speed man stuff. You know, I'm looking at that too. Like, how can I? Well, you know, smoke, but <laughs> the, the show is called Madison Sports. You know, I try, I try to be careful. You know, I don't like just blow up the spot with any of your guests. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, a wife been back and forth past me. I'm like, nah, nah, I'm going to chill, I'm going to chill <laughs> later, later, later. But maybe I have it. might get lit up in here. Yeah, yeah you know, Jersey's legal right now. And, yeah. you know, there's a, you know, opportunities abound. Um, there's so many athletes who are in, involved in the industry. Yeah. Um, Al Harrington is doing some major things. I was going to say my guy Al is, is heavy and so I think he just got approval in Canada is opening something in Canada. Mm -hmm. so Another he, Jersey guy. Yeah, he's doing it big. He's doing yeah. It big. yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, you know, the definitely is, it's like a gold rush happening right now um, and it's it's good it's good to hear that you're wearing your options out. Oh, yeah. Comes, yeah. Yeah, but okay. you know, I want to see with that industry, I want to see you know, a lot of times when you have that gold rush mm -hmm. uh, and that industry taking off, we always the last to get in it. Yeah. Uh, you know, what I want to see is us, you know, getting yeah. it, competing in that space. So I'm yeah. happy for all of the all yeah. of them that I've gotten. Do you, so do, do you know what you want to would want to do? Because there's so many lanes to be in. Like you, you got the dispensary, of course. Yeah. You got the, the grow the grow operations, of course. Right. There's a whole the medicinal side to it. There's a whole health and wellness side has nothing to do with getting high. Right. There's the CBD lane. Right. There's the industrial hemp lane, which again has nothing to do with hot, getting high. You take the uh, biomass of the plant, break it down, make all types of from you know reusable fuels to ropes and yarn. I mean, it's just, it's a huge industry. There's a lot of different lanes. Right. Exactly. So we, you know, but you know, some people just they think we, you know, what I want to open a dispensary. Is that right. something you, you, you're thinking or? Well, you know, I haven't, like I said, I haven't really dove into the space, mm -hmm. uh, but I just see where it's going. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you can see where it's going. Yeah. 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 No. I, I don't, I'm open. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what I want to do, but you know, I'm open to talking about it. <laughs> That's cool. Cause this, like I said, this matters in platform. This is the sports show. Yeah. But it's, you know, we do, we do a whole bunch of other things. And of course, you know, promoting the cannabis culture Absolutely. is it should, but you know, we talk about what gave you, what inspired you to be a basketball player. You, know, you, you caught that business bug, that entrepreneur bug. What, what was that about? What inspired that? You know, aside from can't play basketball forever. Um, you know, I think as you when you when you're winding down your career, um, and you start to think about next steps. Um, you know, that's what I was doing. Um, um, you know, that's what I encourage you know, anybody who's getting towards the end to always have a plan B. Um, so like three, four years before my retirement, you know, I did a bunch of different things. I interned, um, interned with the Mets, interned, you know, with uh, in, uh, NBA sports and 
you know, a couple of couple of different things, trying to figure out what I wanted to do because as athletes, all of our lives is basketball. You know, it's that's all we've done. So, you know, you you're trying to figure out what your interests and in, in, interests and in things are, you know, that's it. So you can move seamlessly into the next steps. Um, but I can't, you know, I can't lie, sit here and lie and say it was like a seamless process for me. It was like it was tough, you know, trying to figure it, figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of just stumbled upon the franchise opportunity and, you know, uh, knew some people that uh, own 10 of them. Um, and they were looking to uh, sell and get out of the business. And it just kind of fell in my lap, you know. Yeah. So it was kind of that type of thing. So, But I've always had that entrepreneurial bug that entrepreneurial spirit. I always wanted to do something in business. I just didn't know what it would be. Yeah. To what about like, what about like, um possibly owning, you know, one of the franchises in the on um, WNBA? Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's so <laughs> you you guys are gonna be the first to hear about this, but I uh -huh. I actually uh we formed an ownership group. Um we, we were in on the Atlanta team. Um, okay. We were one of the we were the other ownership group that didn't get it, um, but it was uh, it was three other players, uh, two other players, and myself. Um, and we have formed an ownership group, um, and we were right there at the last minute, and then they went with the other ownership group. So that was something, you know, that uh, that we wanted to do. Um, I definitely thought and saw an opportunity to to step into that space. But I'm not really closing that down. I think it's still an opportunity. Um, I think, you know, WNBA is going to grow. Yeah. Um, it may be an opportunity for some expansion teams to enter the market. And, you know, we will be open to looking at that opportunity at that time. That's dope. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's dope. Knocking yeah. at the door. Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So Women's Her Story Month, History Month. Yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about that and the importance of that and how you know what are some things that we can do as men to help that expand and people embrace that concept and not just for a month. Yeah. So what I think, um, and I think it's starting to uh, gain some traction now. But I think you know um, if if men could be you know a lot of men support you know the WNBA um, support their daughters. Um, you know what I would say is, you know, if you if you're if you love the, the NBA game, take a look. You know, you know, take a look at the WNBA. Buy a ticket, watch. You know, come out and watch a game. What I always used to say is, once we get you in the arena, we might have a fan in you. Um, so you know, the experience is is an awesome one. Um, you know, grab a, grab a little girl, grab a little boy. Take them to the game, you know, and uh, you know, just support it. Um, I think more the more people that support it and and and, and uh, have an open mind uh, with coming to the games and things like that, the better we are. So yeah, just just support. No. I haven't been blessed to have children. She she wants to she wanted to say hi because she it was hi. she says she wants to meet a WNBA player. So I was hey. she got the sweatshirt and everything. So I was like, I promised her that I would let her say hi on the screen for Women's Day. All right. All right. <laughs> How you doing? Good. Good. Hopefully I can meet you in person one day. Yeah, I want to be on the WNBA since um, my dad got me my hoop for Christmas. All right. Oh, that's nice. Keep practicing. You can do it. Yep, I'm practicing um today all right every day every day bye nice to meet you <laughs> i had to do that i had to do that that daddy plug i'm sorry this well, no, uh, well that was actually where, where, where i was leading to because i was saying i don't i wasn't blessed to have children but my two brothers right here you know they, they are fathers of daughters right yeah and you know so you know it, coming from that perspective i wanted you to to you know, maybe throw her a question or you know, put a perspective, a daddy's perspective on the conversation. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, she, uh, I'm one of those dads right now that I kind of have her involved in a lot of different things. Nice. And she's nine years old, and who knows what she really wants to do. Right. Um, and but it seems like 
uh, the things that she this this she does love basketball. I can tell you that. Um, that's like the one thing that she's real, uh, you know, adamant about. She has like a purpose when she when she's doing something. I can I can show her certain things, and she's like a instant sponge. And it's not like watching your normal. You know, she's just she's just real athletic. You know, right. so. And I'm not even trying to like pump it up. She's like real athletic. <laughs> so I just like I just stand back like in this basement because you know, you, you put anything in her hand, you know, she can swim. Yeah. She that swimming. You know, I put golf clubs in her hand and she can she can hit a, a three wood like 85 yards, you know. So it's like uh-huh. it's crazy. She's all stuff. around, she's just an all yeah. around athlete. But she loves basketball and she really um, you know, she she looks at the game and I, you know, I try to, you know, make sure. I show her, you know, I show her the games. I like to show her women's basketball consistently. Nice. And we sit there and watch it together. And yeah. like I said, she's like a little sponge. So she's out there right now. I'm looking at the video camera because I'm, you know, being daddy and watching the, the right. monitor. But she got a little 10 year old boy she plays with. And the mom is like, oh, that's like loving basketball. Uh, no, it's not. But, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but you know, but they, she goes at them real hard. You know, they play, they play, they play pretty hard together. So I like, right. you know, I, I like that. That's awesome. Listen, you know, and, and the unique and the, the awesome thing about what these young young girls have coming up is they have an opportunity to watch women's basketball and to see it, you know, early on. You know, me growing up, I didn't have that opportunity. Um, even college basketball really, uh, women's basketball really came on, you know, when I was yeah. So, you know, all my idols were, were men. I couldn't really, I didn't really see women doing what I wanted to do. So. Well, I love what you said first, you know, about, you know, your dad, because, you know, for her, I'm, I'm a, I am mean, I only have one child and I had her, had her late. So my boy, my boy days were way gone when she came. So. Yeah. But it's, 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 a, it's an awesome thing when she kind of sees the little things you do and she'll ask me certain questions. So, you know, seeing a woman, it kind of confirms that you told her she can do it. Now um, she's one of those people like, she said, I can do it. I can do it. Right, right, right. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. What about you, Kay? You're you you're a dad. You have daughters. Oh, my my, do- my daughter yeah. don't play sports at all. She's she's yeah. just out here, just whatever. She's at yeah. college now, though. You know, she go to she go to Purdue. Nice. So, yeah. yeah but yeah, but 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 you know, but even from the perspective of invest investing in a woman, a man investing, because you know, we come up, bro, as guys. You know, we really don't how you say, you know, we don't empathize or we don't put ourselves in other people's shoes when it comes to certain things. Yeah. And, and a lot of my friends, when they, say, when they have daughters, it changes their life. It changes oh, their no, perspective. Definitely. I definitely see the perspective of it. Definitely from that, you know, from that sense, you know, having a wife, also having a daughter, you know, you definitely see things different. You know, like, like you said, guys tend to, that don't be in those um, predicaments or situations or maybe single, you know, they their their whole mindset is totally different. But once you do, they always say once you have a daughter, it's a whole different experience and it's different. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why you see like 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 Tamika was talking about, you know, with the father's um daughters cling to the father a lot. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a it's a, it's a great thing, it's a great experience. Maybe you should try it. But yeah, yeah, it's it's like <laughs> hey, 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 nah, man, I'll I, 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 I just go skip the granddaddy mode. I just skip the granddaddy mode. That's it. <laughs> uh, and then, and then speaking of that, I even have, I have my my first grandchild is a is a um a granddaughter. I have a granddaughter, so you know I have a girl. So yeah, my my boys. I have two boys and I have one girl. And my two boys play basketball. And my um that's my oldest son's um daughter right now. So my granddaughter deserves it. She's two now, but. You know, her father playing ball with me, like loving ball and playing ball. I mean, it depends where her, her you know, her mindset is at. You know, she'll probably end up picking up a basketball at some point as well. Yeah. Well, so yeah. I'll be there and ready. Hopefully yeah. I ain't too old at that point. The knees still, maybe I'll just, just WD and spray them up and get them, you know, a little bit loose and, and be able to get out there. And, I, always, and, you know, I always say, Kay, I always say, listen, because – you know, kids, you know, they'll they'll try, they'll challenge you. You know, they challenge me. And I always tell them, I'm not running up and down no court right now, but I, I'll tear you up in some horse now. Right. <laughs> you know, I never really had a game. 
<laughs> but I try to get out there once in a while. Yeah. Well, I, I used to. Come on, you played. Yeah. You played, man. You played. Yeah. Last, 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 actually, I, I think I got a video of, of me hitting a three in, KG, in KG's face. But I ain't going to put it. <laughs> it was wow. lucky. But hey, 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 I, I think I got that, though. But the last, time, the last time I played, I broke my wrist. Had to have reconstructive surgery to handle the wrist. And that was 2015. Oh, so there's man. no more there's no more basketball for me. I you know, maybe horse, maybe horse, maybe O U T. That's right. Man. That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy because I have to I have all the rules now. Like I I gotta shoot, only can shoot jumpers. We play one on one. All I get to shoot is jumpers. Yeah. Shoot anywhere on the court. Um, yeah. and you know, I gotta bring everything back, you know, so wow. two dribbles and then that's it. So it's always but it's it's still fun. Yeah. yeah. You gotta throw the rules in now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like I said, like, hey, listen, I'm only I'm only going out there with my age limit. I mean, my age bracket. That's it. I'm not I'm going not out there. I'm not stepping in a park with a 17 year old or 18 year old. <laughs> <laughs> you you know, bro. Going. And if I, they, I, show I, up, I, I, up, they show up talking about I got next and I'm done. <laughs> yo, yo, I'm envious of you that you even get it in. At the age that we are right now, I hear about you. I'm hearing stories about KG putting it down. I'm like, man, I keep my fingers crossed for the brother. I don't want to hear no reckless stories. You know what I mean? I ain't, <laughs> but, trying, to, I ain't trying to do that, man. To Tamika. Yeah. So, you know, before we have you go, um, please it, it, express to people the importance of athletics, basketball, you know, having a professional career in the WNBA. You know, not just for you personally, but for women and children across the importance of that experience. So I, I, I believe sports, uh, sports has done so much for for my life personally. I can only speak on my experiences, but um, has just shaped my life in a way that I could have could have never really imagined. Um, so I would say, if you know, if you have a child that that you know, that you see um, some potential and they are, um, you know, gearing themselves towards sports, just be supportive of that because the, the lessons I believe that you learn, um, you know, just teamwork and yeah. discipline and, you know, all of those things that you learn, um, being involved in a team and, you know, having to get up and, and practice and the dedication and commitment that it takes to be, you know, be good at something. Um, those lessons that you learn to carry you well beyond, um, you know, any sports career. Yeah. Um, when you move into the corporate, you know, corporate realm, and you know, if you wanted to start a business, all of those tools that you learn being an athlete, you know, just carry carry you so much further. Um, so, you know, just you know, if you have that, if you have a you know a young child that's you know that that's starting to love sports, you know. Allow them to play every sport that they can play because, the, like I said, the tools and the, the things that you learn doing that and involving yourself with that are, you know, immeasurable. Wow, that's dope. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. fellas. Yes. Anything I, to add? I appreciate you sharing that. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Madison Sports is going to be a regular, What we are a regular program. You know, we try to do it once a week. You know, so the, the door is always open. The platform is always open. If you ever have anything to share, we're probably going to be reaching back out to you just to have you back on for, for updates or whatever. Maybe oh, closer. Yeah. 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 I see that, I see that ruckus hat, man. I was rooting for y'all. You know, we right. got it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ruckus should have won that game. It should have. Yep. They it went to the little stall game a little early. It should have just kept playing. Yep, they should just yeah, go. Yeah, no, yeah, they, 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 they I took live, their foot So, I, I live in Houston, and I, I know, I actually know a lot of those players. Or, uh, yeah, but uh, it's, it was just interesting that I, you know, that we were right there. Yeah, they just stopped playing, and um, yeah. that was bad coaching, I think. Yeah, you know? and you know, it, it just it snowballed on them. Yeah, but I think the direction that Tiger got them going, I think, you know, you know. Get some, get some, keep some of them Jersey kids home. Get listen, you know, you on TV on a national stage, and they were talking about Rutgers as a program on the on the mm -hmm. broadcast. Mm -hmm. They're going to be Jersey heads that hear that, 
and mm -hmm. see that they're on the rise. And they said Rutgers is going to be making more and more appearances in this NCAA tournament. They're going to become regulars. Yeah. So when you hear that as an athlete in New Jersey, you start thinking a little different about that. And they got a great facility. It's not yeah. like, Iraq is like one of the most intimidating mm -hmm. places they said to play on, you know, out there. So it's, yeah. it's, it's there. The facility's there and the potential. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think they are. They're on the right track. They're, yeah. they're on the right track. And, you know, I'm starting to look, you know, I start to look at some of the, the up and coming talent in Jersey because um, I have a stepson who's a junior. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of the top talent, you know, you can see, you, you start to see Rutgers as part of, is, is in that mix mm -hmm. with the Illinois and the, you mm -hmm. know, the high, you know, high level, you know, teams. So you're starting to see, you know, they they making they making a little dent now. We hope so, cause you know, thirty years of just <laughs> looking for this hat, you know. Yeah. <laughs> to say you got the last, I was there the last time they was in the daggone tournament. That's just terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they um, on their way though. They turning uh, it around now. I hope yeah. so. Uh, Miss Tamika Dixon, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing some time with us. And like we said, we're going to bring you back real, real soon. Yes, thank you guys for having me. I enjoy spending some time with y'all tonight. Thank Salute you. to the Queen. Salute. Appreciate it. Thank you. Definitely. Yo, that was so dope, fellas. That yeah. I yep. enjoyed that. Yep. Yeah, yeah that was dope. dope. That was dope. Um, Jersey, Jersey girl came up. Yes. Yeah. Like Jersey kind of like been former like Voltron. You know, we, we've been had kind of like all these Jersey guests, and it's not been playing that way. It's just that, you know, that's how that's how it came together. So we just gonna keep doing what we do. I mean, we're gonna touch everybody in, in all in all quarters of the country, maybe the maybe the globe, but you know, Jersey is family. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's enough, so, there's enough talent, there's enough people that come out of Jersey, like he, like like she mentioned. I mean, there's so many. You had a lot of um, pro ball players playing now mm -hmm. from Jersey, and former players playing now too, as well. You know, mm -hmm. not only basketball, also football, all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. So, you know, yeah, we well, we working, we working. Well, Jersey, well, we well, working. yeah. Speaking of Jersey, you know, sometimes Jersey be bugging though. <laughs> so she made Kyrie, man. <laughs> so she made Kyrie. Jersey. Maybe Jersey. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what's up with him, man. He on sabbatical again right now, man. He's his birthday, yeah. right? His birthday sabbatical. That's what it is now. I, 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 yes. don't, I, I don't, don't want to know. believe I that. Saw, I saw that oh. they said he 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 asked him for a few days off, and then then I saw it pop up yesterday. Oh, it's his birthday. I'm just like, uh, what now? People asking for their birthday off? Like, since Come when does that happen? Yeah, you know, the NBA is becoming a real clown show right now. You, know? you got jokers, you got jokers forcing trades, PJ Tucker forcing trades. You got it what's going on right now. It's just a, it's a circus. Yeah, you it, know, it's, it's crazy. Know. Like Kyrie took a three day sabbatical. I'm, I'm like, I'm really hoping it's not because it's his birthday. It's something else that's just a little personal. It's coincidental. It happened to be his birthday. I don't want to think he took three days off for his birthday. It just doesn't look good, man. At the end of the day, after what he pulled, you know, prior to this, you know, and then now to pull this and and his birthday just so happened to be in, come on, he didn't, so he didn't know when his birthday was? Like, come on, man, he knew when his birthday was. And that's my man, too. I just, I don't know, man. I'm just like, dang, Kyle, what are you doing, man? Yo, he's averaging 28 points a game, bro. Like, he's doing his thing, but he just... He'll do something like this. It's just like you can't do that, man. Nah, or, can, or, 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 or can you? Is that the new league that we're in right now? Well, I mean, it ain't. Well, we'll, we'll see. I mean, it could be. Uh, I think it's going to, you know, it's going to be hazardous to the team, man. I think, man, because down the stretch, I mean, you can't. Your teammates. It's the same thing we talked about last time about the Clippers, that culture that the Clippers started looking at saying, OK, if you guys are not practicing hard or you guys taking nights off or you guys want to bring your family on a plane, why why can't I do it? You know, so it just starts to create that and that ripple effect starts coming down. So we got to keep our you know eyes and ears open to see how this whole thing pan out with the Nets, man, because this ain't looking good. And then you're on top of that. You got, you know, KD like just with this mystery injury that just, you know, been out for what? For how long? Nobody knows when he's coming back or if he's even coming back. 
Like, you don't know what's going on right now. No, like, I, it's crazy. Like, I mean, what was the injury? Like, why is he out? What was the initial injury? It was supposed to be a hamstring injury. Supposed to be. That's what they're saying. I mean, I don't remember watching the game of him seeing he pulling a hamstring or whatever, but I don't know, man. That's what they're saying. So it may be, you know, some after effects or some lingering things that's associated through the injury that he had already with the Achilles somehow. Yeah, and they just really, not say it. Tough. That's a tough injury because once you um, corrupt your one, your, your, the other one becomes more uh, vulnerable because yeah. you're using, you're using, you know, that leg more, more often. And now when you strengthen in the one that was uh, damaged, you know, this one is not as strong. And uh, so he has to just be careful for a little while. Um, so you uh, know, with all with, with with his limbs, especially uh, can't, KG, KD is not a big dude. You know what I'm saying? No, he like, got them pencil legs, man. He got the pencil yeah. legs out there as it is, man. So man. Yeah. To to that point, but I don't want to go too far off on a tangent. I don't know if there's other things you guys want to talk about, but just to that point, right? When KD got hurt at Golden State, I said. He's going to regret this. And I always felt that Golden State should not have played him. They shouldn't have cleared him. Um, they said, oh, well, you can't force KD not to play. That's his decision. Mm, nah, I, I disagree. As ownership, you should be thinking about the well-being of, of your product, right? So you, you sit him down. They risked it. They put him out there. He gets injured, right? Now it's what three years later, and he's still having issues because of that injury. Like that, that was a that was a fucked up call. That was a real bad call. At least that was a real bad call. Think. At least we think. I mean, I mean, there's no there's no other way to look at it. It's the only way we can look at it, though. That seems logical. Is that mm -hmm. is is after effects or ill effects of that injury? Like what else could it possibly be? Like Wes said, like if you if you compensating on one leg, your other one is susceptible to 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 being hurt. Like I don't see how. How it doesn't go with, hand in hand with each other. There's no way it's possible that it can't. It, it, it has to. I mean, you know, um, he and, and everything is everything is at risk. The knees, the ankles, everything is just at risk with with, with that injury. So, I mean, literally, I mean, uh, I have I had a buddy who tore his Achilles and messed his ankle up um, playing ball years ago, and he got healed up about eight months later, and we were out. And at a, I think we were watching a football game at a sports bar in West Orange, spectators. And then all of a sudden, that's what he was called back then. And all of a sudden, he jumped up to root for a touchdown, and he said, I popped my other Achilles. This, wow. this thing. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's, that's, that's what happens when you go through something like that. Everything is on the table um, wow. with that injury. So you just got to be real, real, real careful. Yeah, wow. that that. jumping up and cheering for a touchdown, and just, just wow. up and he just that was it. And wow. Clay's injury was very, I mean, they're not similar, but the right. ACL, you know, when you start to pamper one side of your body or one part of your body, yeah. other things are in play because yeah. you're not Trust. paying attention to that area. And yeah. then, he, then he popped his Achilles, yeah, you know? I, so, yeah. I definitely know yeah. from personal experience, you know, when you're, when you're playing with injury, you're co overcompensating, other things go. And your body truly is like a jigsaw puzzle. The skeleton and the muscle is everything is connected. Everything's intertwined. You hurt one thing, you yep. have to make sure you're totally recovered and you're in yep. balance with the rest of your body. You just can't hop back out there. You know, you got to drive the will. Of course, he's a professional athlete. He's the best, the best to do it at what he does. Of course, he wants to play. Nah, young man, you gotta sit down. They Robert Griffith Jr., Kevin Durant. <laughs> That's true. That, that's what it looks like. It look that's a good that's a good that's a good comparison because you drop. I mean, it. but but how do you stop the superstar athlete that feels like? I mean, no, I, I I get no, you, you, know, from you, yourself. Know, you don't clear him you from the, yourself, but how do you stop that? Because you have a medical staff, and the medical staff clears you or doesn't clear you. If they don't clear you, you can't play. It happens all the time. Not you even show, it, you show them a video of Friday Night Lights and Booby Miles. <laughs> <laughs> they put Booby Miles in and Booby couldn't spin no more. They put him on the sideline and it was a wrap. It was over. They they still played the game though, right? But they were like, put him in there, see what he got. Boop, there's the knee again. He's done. Let's keep moving. So that's that's what you show him. It can end at any time. So you just want to. 
You talking about somebody yeah, worth but, hundreds? But, of, he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. He's not just yeah somebody playing intramural sports. He's worth. Yeah, but the thing is, too, you got to think about too what was on the line, man. You talking about a championship was on the line at the time. So yeah. KD wanted to win, and the Warriors wanted to win. So there you yeah. have a nice yeah. recipe for disaster. You, yeah. you, you, you know, you know, you, you know what was on the line? The health of your career going forward. Well, that's that's got that has to come down to the player himself to think long term personally. Yeah, himself. I mean, all the organization yeah. Yeah. because the organization didn't. This think about it like this: Did the organ organization really care? They didn't think KD. They they kind of knew before everybody else was already whispering that KD wasn't coming back. You don't think the organization knew that? They didn't care at that point. Their whole <laughs> mind state was let's try to win this chip by any wow. means necessary. That's crazy. And lost it. <laughs> it. It lost it. Yeah. Okay. I ain't want to go too far. I ain't want to jump off the cliff, but you know. So what else we got on the uh on the menu, Mr. Wesley Henderson? Well, y'all would talk about uh last week y'all were talking about the MVP. Um, and we still got another about 30 games left or so. And just listening to our conversation and then listening to what people are saying around, you know, sports talk shows and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I think what I'm struggling with is the the criteria part of it. Like I I see and I'm seeing what James Harden is doing, and I and he's playing phenomenally. I see what um what LeBron was doing before he got hurt. So what Embiid was doing before he got hurt. But then those two guys got hurt, mm-hmm. and we know what James Harden wasn't doing in Houston before he got there. And we've seen Kyrie be off and on and everything like that. But we also know that Kyrie, James Harden, and KD are all on one squad playing with each other. They haven't really played together at many games, but they're all on the same team. Mm-hmm. And we, then we get down to the people like Giannis, who's just doing what Giannis does because Giannis does the same thing all the time because he's a stat man. But then we get down to the two people who we really need to be paying attention to, and that's Chris Paul and Damian Lillard. And, and the Joker. And, well, the Joker too, but for, for me, Lillard more so than anybody because Portland has had all these injuries. And we keep punishing Damian Lillard, whether it's being an all-star, whether it's being on an NBA first team. It's always something with him because he's playing in Portland. But he doesn't have KD, and he doesn't have Kyrie on his squad. Mm-hmm. And, and he didn't have, have CJ McCollum for a long time. He's, he's, the, he's the best closer in the – probably you could argue in the game when it comes down to it, right, one of the best closers mm-hmm. that's out there. Mm-hmm. And we just keep on penalizing him because he's not, he plays in Portland, and they they didn't have any no CJ no Nurich no uh uh, uh there's another uh what's a what's a big guy a big uh boy from um a Gonzaga uh Zach uh uh Zach Collins I think his name is right or is it Col- what's his name yeah. it could be yeah. hurt so yeah. four guys that have gotten hurt and they still they're still you know relevant and Chris Paul you know. They 29 and 12, and it's because of him. You know, like literally, yeah. it's not because he puts up 35 a game, because you don't have to be a closer in school. Uh-huh. You got to be a closer and make basketball, make plays for everybody, and just keep yeah. the game coming through you yeah. and make people make decisions based on your knowledge of the game. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's that's what he's showing um Phoenix. And we really look at it that Phoenix, they're 14 and 5 on the road. That's because they're closing out games. And who mm-hmm. taught them how to close out games? Chris Paul. Oh, Chris Paul. Yeah. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we are looking at the wrong things. We just get so caught up in stats. Stats, yeah. We're really talking about what true the true MVP is really what it was really what it really right. is all about. That's my point. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think to- that it tends to come down to probably um more than anything, a nice balance of the two because you can't you and I think that's why Dame Lillard gets penalized because. They, they're not an upper echelon team, at least far as the standings. Yeah. If yeah. he was doing what he's doing now and they were top five or, or, yeah. or three, yeah, it would be a different story. So the fact that they are they aren't in that top echelon of the teams, he had they, they, he's getting penalized, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. Now, I now Chris he, Paul, he, on the he, other he, hand, like you said, that is valid because Chris Paul is – Chris Paul is doing that, but it, but it, he's not putting the gaudy numbers up. But yeah. his team is up there at the top, yeah. and he's winning. Yeah. So Chris Paul, that alone will catapult him over Dame Lillard. And I, I don't, I don't personally think it should, yeah. but it is. 
Well, I, I have to agree with that point, Kay, in agreement with Wes, that they, uh, Chris Paul's impact is leading to like we said, most valuable players. So what's the cry? Like when we say most valuable player, we, who, who's winning? Who, who, who gets wins? And why are they winning? Chris Paul. He, he brings more value to the Suns than Damian Lillard does. Even though Damian Lillard is putting up the stats and he's a monster, that doesn't it's not translating into wins. So how valuable is it? Well, well, it didn't translate to wins. Translate it's translating to wins. Damon Lillard is translating to wins. It's just not translated yet fully. I mean, and the season's not over yet. We'll see. We'll see. If if Portland comes comes sneaking up on people out of nowhere, then Dame, you, Dame Lillard has a real serious, you know, case. Like, really, because he has really, really carried the Blazers. Like, seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I love Dame Lillard's game. I, and I, I did, yeah. Chris Paul has played a major part, and he is the reason why the Suns are where they are. But he's not carrying them. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the difference. So, you yeah. know, we just we just picking through. Yeah, a lot I, of I, I see, I see what you mean. Yeah, I see. Yeah, what you Dame mean. Lillard. Just, if Dame, if the yeah. if the Blazers get up, you know, and get a top five, you know, out of it, it's literally Dame Lillard's on his back. He's literally carried them there. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree with that. I'd like even like you got a Rice the third to talk about the Joker. The Joker is in the same situation as Damian Lillard because they put yeah. up numbers, but their teams are five and six in the West. So I think he's an MVP candidate, um, and I think he probably should be talked about more than the three the main people we always talk about because yeah. of who Joker, who Lillard are playing with versus yes. who these other guys are playing with. Yes. So, um, that's, that's the whole thing. Like, for me, even Chris Paul, Chris Paul's an all-star, but he's making – He's Devin Booker was already nice, but he's making he's making Devin Booker look real good because Booker now has less to worry about because he don't have to be a coach on the floor because Chris Paul is taking care of that too. Yeah, but in, in, uh, in all Paul, fairness, in all fairness to Chris Paul, to be honest, Chris Paul is playing with the, probably the least out of all of the um, candidates. Yeah, well, yeah, well Booker Booker is a a potential. No, I'm Booker player. is legit. Yeah, but yeah, the, outside of that, it's just that's role players. And I mean, they, they, got, they, got, they got the big band. What uh, I was DeAndre. Andre, Andre, yeah, DeAndre. DeAndre. But, come on, like we're not like like Aiton's a big guy, and he's serv he's serviceable, but he's not like Aiton's not a, like a like he's not a superstar in this league. Yeah. Yeah. At least yeah. not yet. He's not. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, but it's it's like I guess I guess we're having a real good debate about people that need to be spoken about, whereas. The mainstream is just talking about LeBron and Bede and James Harden. And I get yeah. I get what Harden is doing and it's phenomenal. But yeah. when you still got those two guys sitting in your in your back pocket, yeah, like, but, like but, 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 he, but in fairness to James Harden. No joke in your pocket. Come on. Wait, but in, in fairness to James Harden, though, KD yeah. hasn't been playing, so he doesn't have them in his back yeah. pocket. Yeah. Well, and, 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 Ky and Kyrie will go on a, on a, on a three-day stint. And the, and the Nets still move like nothing. Like it's still it's James, it's become James Harden team. It has, and that's just and that's just phenomenal that he could leave Houston under the circumstances as he did with all the questions surrounding whatever whatever whatever. Get to Brooklyn, and like he's he left Houston putting up forty. Like he was putting up forty in Houston one week, goes to the Nets and he's putting up forty for the Nets, and then KD goes out, Kyrie's bugging out, wigging out, and even though Kyrie. Kyrie puts up all the numbers, right? For like what you're talking about, the impact off the ball, the impact on the team itself, outside of the statistic, you know, Kyrie's a is a is a is a question mark, even though he's on the floor putting up 28. You got to navigate personalities, and James Harden has been has done a great job coming to the Nets, navigating everything, and making them excel. That's like. Not to say he's the he's the favorite MVP because okay. I, I I hear what you're saying about Chris Paul and you know the other people we mentioned. Yeah. Not arguing that, but yeah. also I don't want to sleep on James Harden. And what oh, no, doing. no, no. I just I'm saying they need to talk about more than just that's like it's the pretty. Usual, yeah, it's his yeah. to lose now that LeBron and Embiid are hurt, and it's like really you know like it's there's other guys that are actually yeah. doing that thing. So you know, yeah. um, we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see how it turns out though. And about, yeah. a lot of it has to do with the uh, with uh, the demographics of uh, Lillard because he's always been whether it's been snubbed at an All Star game, it's always him that's getting overlooked. You know, <laughs> it's always the same dude. 
-hmm. you know so that's 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 bugged out to me yeah. yeah so you know before we go to the next point let's bring in uh spliffy allen of course is, is he, he looks like he's in the mix about to nod out or something <laughs> <laughs> what up spliffington what's up what's up fellas nah, the zax master nodding. I wasn't I wasn't nodding, but uh y'all was making some real, real good points about that uh that MVP. Um I will say this though, um with the injuries, I think it's gonna be a reset. So whereas everybody was talking about LeBron and MB early, now that they're hurt, um, it would be a reset. And KG made a good point about how Lillard, you know, he hasn't been on the uh top three, top five. But watch now with these injuries, particularly with the Lakers, because they're going to they're gonna plummet like a rock. And yeah. with um, Portland getting healthy, if if Lillard continue to do his thing, yeah, he definitely may uh, may ascend and be one of the front runners. And, and I definitely think the Joker's in it too. Again, they've been hurt, um, and uh, he's been doing it with less. But again, it's going to be all, like KG said, depends on where everybody fall, you know, once the sandings. And again, everybody's sleeping, but that LeBron inj uh, injury is, is major. And um, and so is AD. Yeah, yeah I, I don't, well, I think that he's going to be out, you know, probably, uh, you know, two, two to three weeks. And in the West, they're third now. By the end of the week, they could be ninth, tenth, you know. So I mean, that's that's legitimate. So I mean, you know, th these things matter. Um, so you know, that's going to be a real, real big thing. Now on the Chris Paul thing, y'all may be forgetting last year in the bubble, Phoenix ran through teams without Chris mm -hmm. Paul. Now that Aiden Cat, he's a baller, and they were not healthy all last year until the bubble. So again, Chris Paul, yeah, he bringing it all together, and you know he is a he he is definitely a, a getting his due. But that Suns team is no joke, though. They 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 stacked. Uh, but you know, my bet's on Harden right now with this resetting. So. My bet's if, on Harden. If I had to pick somebody as a front runner right now, I would definitely say Harden right now. Mm -hmm. With all of the injuries and what's going on, I would say Harden right now, personally. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah, you know, I would say Harden right now. Um, but I think what Wes was saying earlier, he brought up some very good points, and it's a still long season, mm -hmm. and you know, we got we got a lot of room to cover. So, absolutely, you know. I think it's you can't argue Harden is is balling. So yeah, I mm -hmm. mean, it's it, it is it is there. But I just think I was making the case that we need to be talking about more than just those two guys that are hurt and then one other guy when there's like three other people that can really have an argument. Like yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. Um, so I got a question. Yep. Since we're talking about the NBA still, what's going on with the Clippers? Hmm. They're what's looking for the leadership. Clippers? They're looking for yeah. leadership and uh, they're playing not inconsistent but what they need to do is they need to really – they need a point guard, and they really need Lowry. Uh, Kyle mm -hmm. Lowry's on the market, and there's a couple of, uh, you know, I, apparently Philly's after him. Um, the Heat, uh, those are the top two. But the Clippers really need to make an ap aggressive play because they can't stand Pat, and they're missing him. They're missing that one, that, that killer point guard with the leadership who's going to, you know, who has that – uh, championship medal who's been there, who can take him over. Because Kawhi is just, he's not that cat. He's not the vocal leader, and that's what they need. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what they need. I, yeah. I, actually, I mean, yeah, I, I actually like that. <laughs> you know, Lowry yeah. to the Clippers. I think that's a that would be a good move for them. Yeah. That would be a good move, definitely. But, you know, the Philly thing sounds a little more logical for some reason. He's from, yeah. he's a Philly cat. Yep. Mm -hmm. Philly, Philly, Philly's looking for it. I'm just wondering. Okay, so Lowry's gonna become the two because Ben Simmons. What was Ben Simmons gonna be doing? Like he yeah. ain't no two. Lowry mm -hmm. can shoot at least. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Ben Simmons gonna be off the ball like that? I, I don't know. I don't know about it. I mean, it makes sense because he's the Philly guy, but I just don't know, man. I don't know about that mm -hmm. one. From a basketball. 
from a basketball sense, Lowry would fit more as a point guard for the Clippers. Mm -hmm. It makes logical sense because he's a Philly guy to go to Philly, but the chemistry of that, I just the floor, yeah. I just don't know about that, man. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you. you know, I agree yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. I agree as well. But the front runner they're saying right now is a uh, Miami, though. That's the front runner. That yeah, can yeah. work. So, yeah, so, Miami, that would be tough. Yeah, that would be real though. Yeah, for him. Yeah, that would be tough. Yep. What about uh, the main? Lowry's one of the main guys, and you have uh, his uh, running mate, um, the the shooting guard, DeRozan. Uh, no, Norman or something. His name is. Uh, oh, uh, Powell. Powell. Norman Powell. Powell. Norman Powell. 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 Yeah. Uh -huh. and then they have uh, the other third. The Aaron Gordon was another big name. Everybody's talking about now too from Orlando. Yeah. But the um, Rosen's on the move as well. The Rosen's yeah, on the move. Well. They say possibly. Um, and um, who's um. Oh, Fournier, um, Gordon's a teammate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So both of them, you know, so again, and that's the thing. Teams are going to be making moves. And with the injuries, Philly's not really hurting with uh, the Embiid loss, which is good. Yeah. <clears throat> They're standing back. But again, um, and uh, surprisingly, uh, so is uh, Brooklyn, you know. Yeah. Obviously, we don't know what's up with uh, Kyrie again, but uh, but um, with uh, the West and LeBron and AD, and then you're talking about you know teams like the Pelicans trying to you know show some fight. Denver getting healthy, um, um, Portland Mavericks, getting healthy. The Mavericks are getting healthy. Mavericks, uh, yeah, it's gonna be. <laughs> we 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 looking for a. Uh, a crazy finish out west, and the seedings are gonna mean everything. I can tell you what, though, we talked about it and we touched on it earlier. Though, if you're Utah and you first, and the Lakers squeak in there at eight, oh boy, <laughs> Utah's gonna be like, my goodness. Like, yeah, but and this is what you this is your present for AC. <laughs> now, how does it? I'm trying to remember how it works from that that play in. That play in is from uh, six to ten, right? And then whoever. Is that how it works, or is it? Oh, I don't. I don't know exactly. I know. I know they have ten people. Ten teams get in, or uh, is it twenty-two total? Like, is it twenty-two teams that get in, like they did the bubble, or? Yeah, yeah like but but that first round, it is. Um, it's a play-in. Team seven through ten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's it. It's team seven through ten. They play a um, a best two out of three, okay. and then. The, those two. So to be honest with you, I think if you're not finishing one or two, and I forget how it was explained to um, uh, as far as the uh, playoff seedings, but if you're not one and two, they say the seed you want to be in is actually six because you avoid the playing tournament and then you avoid the number one seed. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, so again, I'm not sure how it brackets, but it's not nor it's not the normal uh, pairings like it is because that, that those, again, those six through 10 teams have, have to play in to get in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to find yeah. out. I don't know. I don't know how you, how you can be a Utah jazz fan or a Phoenix sun fan and think that you got to play LA in the first round healthy, you know, oh, yeah. healthy. that is, that, that is, that is not fair. No. But yeah. it's, it's getting interesting. And it's getting down to the wire. What is it? What like thirty games left or something yeah, like that? If that, yeah, it's about that much. That's about thirty yeah. more games yeah. left. So we'll see. I just, you know, just real quick back to the Lakers. I just, man, if 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 they if LeBron's out fifteen games, man, I see them losing at least ten of those games. Ten of the fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's you about. Nice the, yeah, that, that's accurate. Yeah. But but even if but even if it's five. Yeah. You know, that's still – that's them dropping about, you know, a minimum of three to four spots. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Even if even if it's five. But it may be seven. Hey, listen, I wouldn't doubt them falling into the ninth or tenth spot. Like, really, like falling that's out and, and, and being at the bottom of the playing list. Like, mm -hmm. seriously, yeah, but, like yeah. it's that bad, you know. But can I just say that that – it gives me, a, you know, an even more great appreciation for LeBron James, what he is actually bringing to the table. Because when he leaves, 
you see what's get left. It, what gets left. It's like well, he, yeah, he has them in there. That's true, hot. But let's let's be real. They 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 since Anthony Davis went down, they haven't been playing really good basketball. They would win a game here and then lose a game or two. Then win well, a game. They, they lost. They, 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 they lost AD. Consistent. They lost AD and Schroeder. That's true. Right. That is true. Yeah, they lost AD That's and Schroeder. They, it was there was a bunch once, of injuries that right. Once you know, once Schroeder came back, they 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 were they were kind of back on on course there. That's yeah, true. And, you know, and, and that's still amazing when you got Le, you know LeBron James and you know Schroeder playing a two man game like like who would have thought like that would be adding up to wins for the Lakers without AD like, uh, but him out, I don't you know I don't I don't really expect much from them right now. Um, yeah, I like Schroeder though. I, I yeah. thought Schroeder was a um was a good pickup. I like they were um you know I was I saw um Skip Bayless, your man was talking like before like a while ago when they first did the thing. So oh they're gonna miss Rondo like and then I was just like come on man like like Rondo did did his thing and no disrespect to Rondo but Schroeder is not a ain't no scrub now like he's no Schroeder can get you buckets he can get you way yeah. more buckets than Rondo Rondo now but Rondo what? has the experience. Like we gotta see what Schroeder can do. Right. Down. You know, when it when when it get the sweaty bombs yeah. around, around yeah. it's time in the playoffs and get deep to that because that's uh -huh. Rondo time. That's playoff Rondo. Mm -hmm. Rondo steps up at that point. But you know what Rondo could do the straighter can do. Rondo could Rondo was one of the few people on the team that could talk to LeBron. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So when you have another person that can tell a superstar that his stuff does stink sometimes. Is helpful to that to that superstar even. Yeah, yep, so yep. You gotta hear the truth sometimes to in order to be great. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the one thing that mm -hmm. Rondo to the table for both LeBron and AD. You know, they yep. they great, but he let them know when they weren't being great. Yeah, he reminded them that they weren't being great, and that's what yeah. that's what they, he held them both accountable. Yeah, that's supposedly it, supposedly that guy at this point now is as Jared Dudley. Supposedly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but you need somebody. You need now. You need somebody on the floor that could do that. You need somebody like because with, with Rondo, like not he has necessarily, a, not necessarily. Well, well, you know, Rondo, like, well, if they're well, on the bench and they're in the locker room and their presence is strong enough, they don't necessarily have to be on the floor. Well, but with Rondo, right, his his vision and understanding of the game, right, gives LeBron a set of ears that he's not That's hearing true. from nobody else. That is true. In the in the floor of the game, Rondo can say, "No, I want you to go there," and LeBron right. will go, "Okay." But, or, or like you said, like you saw last year when it came down to it, um, I would imagine I can imagine Rondo was like, "No, I'm taking the ball out." The pass that he made to AD, I can imagine that was Rondo in that huddle and said, "No, I'm taking it out." Well, Rondo answered the question when they asked about the last play. They said, "Was it for LeBron James?" He said, "Well, how could I give someone the ball that wasn't looking at me?" Right. <laughs> That's what Rondo said. <laughs> so I mean, so that's why you that's why you miss a guy like Rondo because he was like, listen, how can I how can I throw him the ball if he's not looking at me? So well, he was the brains of the operation. Yeah, Don't get yeah. it twisted. I mean, nobody has a higher basketball IQ probably in the NBA than than Rondo as far as yeah. players. You know what right. I'm saying? And, and again, the fact that he can talk to uh, LeBron, like like y'all said, that's invaluable. That's you know invaluable. what I'm saying? Yeah. So well, I wonder if that well that I, if that play was chefed up in the huddle by Rondo, like no, I think this is what we should do. Probably not, Probably. but I bet you that I bet you that Rondo said no. I'm taking the ball out because I'm going to make the right decision at this mm. point. No, no, I need to do it. And the play, I think the play was to go to um LeBron and LeBron, like he said, LeBron didn't look at him. And but we're talking about the high IQ of Rondo. Rondo's like, okay, well. Here we go. I'm going here. Like you got to be able to, you know, to make that decision, that split decision, you know, that quick within that. You got five seconds. Are you getting that five second call? So, yeah. you know, LeBron ain't look at me, so I had to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Listen, man. They're gonna. They, it's it's gonna be a, the playoffs are gonna tell the two the true story. Um, they don't have Rondo in the playoffs. Trader is a more of a, a offensive mind, but he's not a bum. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, they, they just got to, they just, Vogel got a coach. That's pretty much what it comes down to. And Kuzma got to step up and KCP got to step up and all these guys just got to step up if they want to win some. What about Caruso? LeBron got you some commercials. Man, you got to step up. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of coaching, speaking of coaching, you took the words out of my mouth. Go ahead. Speaking of coaching, my wife always, you know, laughs and, and jokes about um Steve Kerr. She said that Steve Kerr took Mark Jackson's job over there. He just been sitting on the bench, just not coaching and just riding the coattails of a good team. And he just came out and said that um he had um this was last season was the best time he um in a long time that he's coached winning 15 games and kd took you know took, took it personal it was like what what like basically it was almost like a shot at kd mm -hmm. you know and steve kerr like like you had last year you won 15 games and now you got this year so it's like now we got we we have to see steve kerr really coach and see what steve kerr can really do they 37, they 37 and 71 in the last 108 games, 37 and 71 with Steve Kerr. So, again, everybody forgets uh, Luke Walton won 36 out of 37 games with that same squad when he wasn't there. Exactly. So, I mean, and Mike Brown. And Mike and, Brown was winning. Brown did well there. when he wasn't there. So, you know, is he is he a good communicator? Yeah, we're not going to take that away from him. Well, 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 to that point. Someone, um, someone on TV made a very good point. I thought, mm -hmm. in in that, the disgruntledness that he had with the players or KD that last year, right? Of KD's, right? So if you're such a good coach, you're supposed to know how to juggle these personalities. You put, you supposed to know how to massage these personalities. So maybe Steve Kerr isn't the coaching mind we we thought he was, right? That that's what was said on mainstream TV, and I was. I was a little shocked that it got said, but you know, is his his whole thing is being called into question right now because he was supposed to be this guru when all actuality he inherited a team that was already built by Mark Jackson. Well, yes. maybe maybe he's not a good diffuser, you know, when it comes to that. You know, maybe coaching is one thing, but all I mean, un unfortunately, you know, the cry I mean, under that, the criteria calls for you to do all, you know, all of the above. So not only do you need to be a good in coach, um, um, in game coach, but you also have to be able to diffuse and deal with your mm -hmm. superstar players as well as your bench players, and you got to be able to get your team ready mm -hmm. and get through those situations. And I mean, I, the the jury's still out. Like he obviously couldn't mm -hmm. handle the situation and the turmoil mm -hmm. that was going on in there. Yeah. Well, he, he tried to clean it up by saying that. Um he was just talking about the uh, the the lack of the uh, weight of of a championship and the pressures and all of that, and it was just more like uh, because they didn't have any expectations at all. The players were playing hard and and free flowing and all of that. You know, he basically tried to clean it up, but he 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 did say that that was not a shot at KD at all, and the um. I guess the um, the writer who actually tweeted it, um, the quote, um, he basically said that, you know, he was wrong. And he said he, you know, basically he wanted an apology because that was completely taken out of context. That's what the he writer, said. But the writer also works for the Warriors. Mm. So when the heat comes down, then uh, you better get out there and fix that. Yeah, I, right. I don't, you know, I just don't understand how you can be 22 or 21 with two, two All-Stars. That's all I'm saying. I mean, we put mm. if we, we we put Draymond on Mount Rushmore. So if he's that guy with Steph, they got they got to win more than 21 games. I mean, I'm just I mean more than. 22 oh, did you, games. did you hear what Draymond yeah. said today? He said he's the greatest oh, defender he's, of all time. He is the greatest defender of all time. Well, then that's what Wes is saying. If he's the greatest <laughs> defender of all time, and you out there with the greatest shooter of all time, you got to get more games than that. Got to yeah. be 500 to be the greatest anything. <laughs> no, I agree. <laughs> And maybe he's just the greatest hype man of all time. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. listen, we 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 can't we we can we can get in these arguments about these these guys with the errors and everything like that, but you can't change you can't change the timing, right? So they're never going to be able to prove. They can just say it, and we me and Hawk had this conversation about the self promotion that goes on with these guys now because of social media. They'll tell you what they are, but you know, for me, let me let me let me just watch what you are. You know, like I don't mm -hmm. like. I might be tough on Steph, but I don't see Steph saying I'm the best shooter of all time. You know, he don't. No. He's not doing that. You know, um, when he's MVP, he's not, or when not winning MVP, he's not saying I should have more MVPs. Like, let me decide. Let us let let us do this on this forum. You don't have to tell us 
how good you are because we already know. You know what I'm saying? And we're gonna and we're gonna like you know if you haven't won an MVP since 2013, like I told uh, Hop, uh, it's been eight years. I can, as a fan, even if I like you or don't like you, I respect your game enough to say, yeah, I think you should have had another MVP in that last eight years. Was LeBron an MVP in the last eight years one time at least? Probably so, but he didn't get any. But he don't need to tell they, they, these guys. Always got to tell us that they're the mm-hmm. they're they're the best things in sliced bread, and it's kind of gets kind of corny. <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> now it's all about brand, and that's yeah. how these cats are built, and 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 uh, and uh, basically are created now. It's all about their brand. So yeah, again, it's, brand yeah. that's not, that's it's, not the, cool. it's, it's the social media, you know, culture. It's yeah, that's all it everybody, is. you know. Used to be a time when stars were stars, and they they didn't, win, they didn't dwindle with the little people, quote unquote. Now, because of social media, you got you know people who come down that dwindle with the KD got burner accounts where he's engaging with total strangers, mystery people with fake icons, and like yeah, it's like yo man, like it ain't that it ain't that deep, like no, it's not. Really like it's like you know I do my social media, my little Facebook, whatever. But I don't, I had to, I, I ain't not, not doing burner accounts, you know, you know. So anyway, that's that. You got to take the good with the bad, man. Yeah. That's what it's about, man. Like you know, <laughs> you know, always be roses, man, and everybody don't love you, man. Like and that's just yeah. The truth. yeah, it's real, it's real easy, right? It's like that simple, yeah, right? man. Like. Everybody don't love you, man, and everybody don't think you're the greatest player, and 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 this or and that's, that, and that's you know? okay, and that's, that's okay. okay. It's that's okay, okay. It's and okay. you got to be able to take it, man. If you could, and that's what like that was one of the good points of what even Tamika said, man. Like when you're getting ready for sports, and, and sports guys should know that should know it better than anybody, man. Like it teaches you how to play a team sport, how to be a team player, not only in sports but in life. It teaches you how to win and lose. And we even and now and, and we always talked about it. And that was one of the things I always said watching Donald Trump. I was just like, yo, he always talking about somebody such a loser. He's a sore loser. He mm-hmm. pro- and he and you could tell he never plays sports because sports get you ready to be to take a L just as well as it do to take a take a W, man. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you got to be able to gracefully bow out, man, and say, you know what, you got me this time, man. I'll get you the next time, man. Mm-hmm. But some of these people, man, are too yeah. thin, skin, man. Especially with social media now, man, they got people being too too thin, thin skinned out here, man. Mm-hmm. And everybody always looking at it like somebody's disrespecting you or somebody can't have an opinion. It's only an opinion, man, and that's it. Trump is an athlete. He's a he's he's always the best <laughs> at his golf clubs. <laughs> you know, he's always a club champion. They said, yeah. um, what's his name? Um, Mike Tirico. You know Mike Tirico? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He said mm-hmm. he played with Trump, right? And um, they said that he said, you know, I'm not a great golfer, but I hit the best shot of my life on this par five. He said I took out my three wood, and I tagged the ball. And it was up. It was an uphill uh, hole, and it rolled up the hill, and it looked like it went next to the flag from where I was. So I was, I, my chest was poked out. He said, he said he walks up to the the green, and Trump has a golf cart that's like twenty that goes fifty miles an hour versus the twenty that they normally go right. <laughs> and, um, Cut the he, governor he, off. They said that it was his ball. Tariko's ball was in the sand, right? So. Uh, after the round, he's, he's at his car, and one of the Secret Service men came up to me and said, hey, that, that shot you hit on 11, he was like, it was right next to the flag. Trump kicked it in the sand. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds Trump, very Trump-like. <laughs> yeah, he, but, you know, but, you, but you know about Mike Tirico, though, right? <laughs> hey, man, listen, man. I can't even do that. Yeah, but, hey, you know that, but you know, you know, there's an argument that golf's not a sport, so. Yeah, well, yeah, they say <laughs> If a if a if a eight year old uh, that weighs seventy pounds and a and a seventy year old that weighs four hundred pounds can still hit the ball the same way, then you know it's physics, like, right? Like, cool. <laughs> yeah, but you still got to do it. You still got to do it. You know, still got to do it, man. We, we, you don't have to. Yeah. I'm the wrong you, person you, to have this argument with because I play college golf and I play golf. So yeah. uh, nah, you. I mean, yeah, it's not as physical. But I mean, it's it's definitely uh. You gotta be athletic. Mental. You gotta mental. be athletic to hit the, the, the yeah, golf ball. You gotta no, be I, you, have to be be you have to be in shape. You get out yeah, there, yeah. pull your back, you walk, pull your yeah, back yeah, out yeah. all over the place. You gotta ride the cart. No, you get to ride in the cart. You know. Yeah. But yeah. well, it depends. If you're playing on a tour, you can't go. 
you, you're not driving a cart on a tour. So you got to uh, walk. And, and in college, the same way. But uh, Tiger brought the athleticism to golf. I mean, he, he, he took it to a n- new level, really. Because, you know, no one was really lifting weights and doing all that. But Tiger took everything. So that's why now, you know, you'll have really athletic uh, golfers. You he's know, because, again, they're, they're weight training. They're doing all of that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, crazy. So, uh, who else we had, uh, Mr. Wesley Henderson? We got uh, on the menu. We uh, I think we hit pretty much. Yeah, we, we, we good. Uh, touched on. Yep. Yeah, we one, good. Uh, yeah, we absolutely hit everything. Zach Smash, you got any information for us? For- well, well, what about uh, us redoing uh, our oh, final four? Oh, that's right. right. That's right. right. That's right. 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 The line is missing something. <laughs> How so you want to whip, you want to whip out the eraser now? Then, then oh, you want yours? Then, yeah. It wasn't in the magic marker. You did yours in a pencil. You want to erase we, now? We, yeah. Now we do the uh, the reseeding. Okay. <laughs> we do the. Okay. Listen. We we're down to the sweet sixteen. We're down to the sweet sixteen, and you know, let's 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 put together legitimately a final four. If y'all don't have it. I can okay. just go over them real still, quick. I still have my final okay. four, though, Cliff. I'm not. I my final four is okay. I'm just I'm trying to explain to you. So <laughs> Wes, no, your whole four is still alive. Yeah, my no, four is still alive. You have Rutgers. Rutgers. You, you, you have Rutgers. Rutgers. Cliff is only talking to me and Hot and, and him like right now. You fine, Wes. Stick with yours. Then. I'm good. I'm not. He's shining on us right now. Wes is shining yeah. on us. <laughs> right. Wes, yeah, he Wes. What everybody I'm, didn't know, he's you know he. His statistics. Yeah, I, I think, well, I knew that guy had one, I knew that one difference. Me and KG went, went, you went Oklahoma or Oklahoma State, and I went I'm Oklahoma and, State. Yeah. But we have everything else the same. Yeah. So I, I, go I, Alabama and um and Baylor. I think we have all those those the same. Yeah, I just need to swap my joint and put my Michigan boys back up in there. Well, I'm uh I'm going to roll. Well, I had Bella before, but I'm going to, uh, and Gonzaga, but my new two, uh, Florida State and Loyola. Mm. Loyola. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 pick them. Sister I'm Jean. With, I'm, rolling with I'm, ro- Sister Jean. I'm rolling with Sister Jean. She's 101. You know, they bring her, they bring her some, some, some supreme joy this okay. year. Okay. I'm not, mad. <laughs> I'm not mad at you for that one. Okay. Yo, so, like, y- y'all know that. I'm totally ignorant of college basketball because I got two teams in the final four playing against playing each other in the sweet 16. So that's, that's whack. Um, but that said, I'm gonna pick Baylor in that game. So let me go, I'm gonna go Baylor, Gonzaga. Does Houston work? Yeah. 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 In Michigan. No, that doesn't work because uh that doesn't work. Oh no, it does, it does, it does. Okay, yeah, okay. There it yeah, is. It it yeah, it's good. All right. So Although, Michigan, you know, Houston Gary gets smoked, hence the orange. Q Scary get in that, by the way. You know what I mean? Bay- Just so you know. Buddy, Buddy Bay. Bay- <laughs> yeah. Bay- Buddy, Buddy Ball. <laughs> Buddy Cliff, Ball. Cliff, Cliff is a long time Syracuse fan. Buddy That's Ball. Buddy <laughs> Ball. I'm not mad at you. If I used to like the orange man back in the day. Yeah, I'm just listening. Yeah. They brought me joy this weekend. Yeah, they, they, all these games, though. It was, it was, it's been a good tournament so far. Very good. Very it's good. A good tournament so far. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right, so gentlemen, I got that written down in my and you. So you got you got you you got a uh, Baylor now. You got Gonzaga now. You done watch a couple of games, and you're gonna have Michigan and Houston. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> and Cliffy. So you got Florida State. And you got uh, um, sister, sister. What's her name again? Sister, sister Jean. Jean. Sister, sister Jean. Jean. Yeah. And that was a tough one because I wanted to go with my cues, but I think uh, Loyola may do it. They okay. got they got D. They bring a big D. So well, you and I got. Then we have this is our game this weekend because I think the oh, winner, yeah. the Syracuse yeah. Houston game, is going to the Final Four. The winner of that game yeah. will be in the Final Four. And I, and, and, and I know your heart was broken when Rutgers because they just wow. 
Yeah. They just fell apart. I couldn't even believe. I fell for you. I was like, wow. I, and I wanted them. I was like, okay. They're used to beat Rutgers. I don't they, know about they, you. They, 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 took the, they took the air out the ball too early, man. Like when you start yeah. doing that and, and you, you know, you, you, you stop with the aggressive play, it's just, it, it's tough. The momentum just, just is, no, is no longer there. And it's just tough. Like it's too early to do. They did it too early. I think the play that I think the turning point of the game was when my man threw that pretty ass alley oop to the big man and he blew the dunk. And then Mm -hmm. on the other end, he didn't get back on D. They scored. And then Mister, then then the same big man missed a putback. And then Mm -hmm. and then the the final nail in the coffin was that that N one off the off a missed shot. You know, it was like yeah. So you you know what you you just you just you just you just gave me an idea, Wes. Um, for for this for next week, right? A play like that, we should get some some footage of it. Just find it on YouTube afterward. Send it to me. I make it happen, and then we can show it during the show so the viewers can see what what you saw. Oh, the play, the, the play. Yeah, tape. we'll bring we'll bring it up in real time. Okay, I can find yeah. that. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll find a miss layup. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just or just anything that you know. If you want to display your your expertise in the in the game itself. Oh, so you gonna let me run to the board like Kenny does? Yeah, go like Kenny does, or you know, uh, what's the, what's the um, what's the code? When they started with Kobe, where he he break down the game, the spotlight. Oh, uh, details. 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 There you go. Yeah, do, do like a little little joint. You know what I mean? Break break down the game. Mm. Yeah, I can do that. Because yeah. I, yeah. I don't see you setting up no board at the house. No. Drawing plays up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like he should have backdoored and and took the pick from here. Then you know the bounce pass would have been perfect. <laughs> now y'all, y'all need to see my um my back you know when i'm when i'm in the yard with the little one i had her on a towel the other day shooting um from her knees uh so i'm trying to get her to understand how to shoot a fadeaway when it's time and that's mm. how much strength you got to put in the back and um, how much air you got to put in the basketball on your knees trying to shoot up that high so when you fade away you still got to put that same arc on the ball wow. so it's like little things i've been doing with her and you know mm-hmm. she just Let's me do it. So I just, I'll see. Oh, I yeah. tell her, I, it's like Karate Kid. I'm like, show me sand the floor. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. show me paint the fence, you know? So she does it and it's like, it's all good, you know? Yeah. That's what y'all got to check out. I'm going to start videoing it. Her little yeah, yeah. workout yeah. routines. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, gentlemen, you know, I mean, we can move it along. I mean, some other things that happen. I'm yeah. sure we're missing something, but I don't, you know. Wait. Think like, you think, that's it? There it is. What's the odds? What's the odds looking like, Cliff? Real quick. Oh, What's, the odds, like? What's the odds looking like? On well, the final four, well, four right, odds looking like. Well, right, right now, obviously, the odds on favorite is uh, Gonzaga, but um, the um, mm-hmm. it's, the well, the uh, favorites in each bracket is Gonzaga, Baylor, uh, Houston, and uh, Michigan. Obviously, like chalk, but. Watch out for some sleepers. Most of the sleepers that I talked about last week came through. Ohio came through. All of the sleepers covered, but some of them actually won. But this week, uh, watch out for uh, – USC got some twins. Watch watch that game because, again, um, there will probably be Oregon, and that's who plays Gonzaga next because Gonzaga's going to uh, just uh, mop uh, Creighton. Um, and then um, Oral Roberts shoot the three. And they play Arkansas. So, again, that could be another tricky game where they can get – they can see Baylor. Yeah, I know. I'm with you they, on that one. Yeah, that, that, that's that's another uh, solid one. So, again, um, it should be some uh, s- some good matchups. But right now, uh, you know, uh, Gonzaga's right now at 2-1 to one still. You know, so anything – you know, I, I like the field myself. But, uh, you know. If you're being the betting favorite, is uh, I'm with, you, I'm with you on the field. I don't, I don't, I don't know if Gonzaga is going to win it all, but um, you know, I know they're because they, the they haven't been tested, and unfortunately, Creighton, I don't think Creighton really going to test them. I mean, yeah. Creighton can shoot the three, and uh, they they played a good game last yeah. game, but but prior to that, they've been playing, you know, wishy washy, so they may get uh mopped, but uh, that second game, that elite well, who, eight, 
Mm-hmm. They're going to play either uh, Oregon or USC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Watch out because the Pac-10 mm-hmm. doing their thing. That's when it's gonna get tough. Yeah, they're gonna mop, mm-hmm. they're gonna mop Creighton. Yeah, the Pac 10, yeah. man. I, I'm like, man, UCLA, USC, Oregon, they they or, all Oregon State too. Oregon don't State, sleep. Yeah. They I all, mean, Oregon all State, got, yeah. I mean, they the only all. team that lost so far was uh is Colorado. And that was uh, you know, they, they played a little bit with uh Florida State, but uh Pac 10 is cruising. Yeah, the big yeah, Oregon team. State got some boys like them, them, them some big boys on Oregon State, man. And they they could jump and them dudes go hard on the glass, man. I was yeah. watching that Oklahoma State with game with them. They was they were going hard on the glass, man. Yeah. Blocking shots, just out there, just like snatching everything out the air. So yeah, Oregon State. I, I had never watched them, but they're yeah. tough, you know. They yeah, and or- Oregon one. too. Yeah. You may want want to watch Oregon too because they just recently got a healthy. Uh, towards going into the, uh, this tournament, actually, and um, uh, they, they, you know, I was I was wondering because they got that walkthrough because VCU basically had to, you know, uh, the uncontested game, yeah. but they yeah. blew them out in, in, in their game one, and they got a USC. So again, it's going to be a battle of Pac-10, um, and and USC had those t- those twins, one of which yeah. will be a lottery pick. So uh, that'll be a good game. But yeah, the winner of that game will definitely. Uh, have something for Gonzaga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll see. All right. So that, that's what that is. Um, this is your boy, Hakeem Green, channel live, live and direct, BDP all day, every day. All we do is spark mad ism here with Wes, KG, Cliffy Cliff, Madism Sports, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, let me wrap. Right what up, Woo? Got Stench in the building. Uh, stench Eight, up in here. Yeah, Stench is in the building. Run A. Rice is in the building. Run Art. Art Williams in the building. Art You know what I'm saying? Marcellus, no doubt. Big my Dan. Cole Brown. Big Dan. That's my cousin. Derwin Dur- in the building. Who, who's that? Nicole Brown. Nicole Brown. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody that tuned in today, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share the stream so we can share the wisdom of Madison Sports. Once again, this is Hakeem Green, and we out. Peace. Before we go out, Juju's oh, back. Oh, oh. Juju's back. Juju's oh. back. Before oh, we see. go out, Juju's back. I'm out. <laughs> Juju's back. Ah. <laughs> Juju's we'll talk, back. We'll talk, we'll talk, we'll talk about it another day, yo. Yes, All right, y'all. Yes, peace. we will. <laughs> peace. All right, y'all. Peace. All right. Peace.